just barely got started in time for the music this time. I kind of have this routine I do. As I get started, so I can sync the audio and the video because I record them separately. I do this thing where I count one, two, three, and destroy. at the same time and that helps me sync the audio to the video but the music's been starting just like right off the bat recently which is good I like the music I saw a message it was like you know when you turn on Minecraft and it says something funny up there like um, you know, goats, exclamation point, or something like that. It said, the parrot is no more. The parrot has ceased to be. Why would that be? What? There's a parrot right there. I wonder if it's just, uh, it, A, it could have been a joke, but, you know, not funny. B, you know, maybe the parrot's still in this. Um, world, because it was originally, I, you know, I don't know how that works. Anyway, that's kind of disappointing. It's like, why would you take a parrot, the parrot, out of the game? The parrots were really nice, and they had all these different colors. In fact, I remember one of those messages being something like, well, it wasn't that one, because, you know, there's also, you know, like, as you're loading the game, there's hints or something, or, you know, maybe trivia, and it said something like, parrots come in, you know, 32,000 colors or something like that. So why would you be showing off one day about how many... Let's see if I can turn this. Music up. Like, I can hardly hear the music in my headphones, and I like the music. It's just one thing after another with the audio. Like, just now, I had to restart. Like, why won't my microphone work? You know, restart and mess around. Well, the switch was off on the actual, you know, physical the cord. But I think I turned it off, you know, while testing it before I restarted. <laughs> You know, how stuff like that happens, it's just infuriating. Okay. Oh, okay, that, there was something clicked in my ear. It sounded like the, you know, mic was being unplugged or plugged in or something, but it's still working, so it's gonna keep chatting. Oh, I'm yawning. Sorry about that. Rude. <laughs> Rude. Oh, I figured it out. That one. I hope that's not loud in your ear. That's really annoying. I 
think this is a I like this headset I have and I think it's really nice generally other than when it stops working there's a few quirks like software I'm not fully understanding what's going on I won't bore you with the details but another is like that's what that was just now was the my elbow was on the cord it's not wireless and my elbow was on the cord and it was kind of pulling where it plugs in and it, I've noticed it's really sensitive like if you just tap it it um, makes a noise like that and it's really annoying because I, I think I did notice in my um, when I was editing a video once and it was like you can hear that and that's really annoying Anyway, let's talk about the first process, first step of that process I called Titan Maker last time. If you want more information, you can look up the website titanmaker.com. But the first step is um, just describing the conflict. You might think, oh, boring. It's just some preliminary step, but it's important in itself. And there's a few parameters you need to know. First, There needs to be a, a, an intense experience of emotion. The four core emotions, well, there's five core emotions, according to Titan Maker. They are joy, anger, fear, sadness, and disgust. Was that five? I think it was. Um, but joy, you wouldn't you wouldn't do this process with joy i mean basically if something brings you joy keep doing it <laughs> you know keep experiencing that you've done something right um but so you know we can call the others you know maybe negative emotions i don't know if that's going too far, but they're at least emotions that are representative of having experienced a conflict of some kind, whether in yourself or with another human being. And Titan Maker works for both of those types of conflicts. I think typically when you're going through this process uh, it, you've experienced another uh, you've experienced a conflict with another human being.
Um, I had a conflict yesterday. Let's use that one. One of our trainees here at the center, well, he's not a trainee, he's a graduate. Um, he's a resident here at the center. And he was being helpful yesterday and I was washing my clothes and he took um, my last load of clothes out of the dryer, which was my sheets, you know, like my duvet cover and sheets and pillow cover. And I think I had a few other things in there, like some rags. Um, and he folded them for me, took them out of the dryer when they were done and folded them, which was nice. And he does this sometimes, but I brought it back up to my room and it was kind of getting late. I was ready to veg. <laughs> and so I was going to put the duvet cover on my quilt and I noticed it smelled like cigarette smoke and I felt anger <laughs> this is like uh, you know I don't want my sheets to smell like cigarette smoke and there's something special about having clean sheets you know anyway they smell good and they feel soft so I was kind of looking forward to going to bed with clean sheets. Um, and I'll just be honest, I, I'd prefer just to handle my own clothes and sheets and stuff. It's nice for him, you know, he's just trying to be helpful, but um, he's done this before and I just feel like, you know, thank you, but let me just do that, you know. Um, anyway, I felt anger, and that's a conflict, you know, not a big deal. Well, I won't. You know, prejudge it. I felt anger. I mean, that's what it was. In fact, you need to know that, like, Maybe, because this was not a big deal. I might want to say, I was frustrated or miffed. <laughs> you know, that's probably the perfect word to describe. You know, I was miffed. I ended up washing my sheets again. Um, no big deal. Just a matter of putting them in the... Throw them in the washer wait 45 minutes, throw them in the dryer, wait another 45 minutes, and it's done. Um, but it's important to recognize the emotion, the underlying emotion. So in Titan Maker, whether you're just, you know, step one or step any, any of the steps, Use the core emotion. Don't use another descriptor. Choose fear, anger, sadness, or disgust. Don't use, you know, I was miffed, I was frustrated, I was blue. You know, use anger or sadness. Um, I was intimidated, no, I was fearful. I was fear, I was fear. <laughs> oh gosh, I am fear. I experienced fear. 
anyhow. So that was just kind of a long description of the conflict. Um, to give you a backdrop, that was not step one. Step one, you know, A, there's no ABC. I'm just using that casually. A, identify the emotion. I was experiencing anger. Um, B, just give a simple description. Two to three sentences, and it needs to be the actual moment. You need to be describing the actual moment you experienced the emotion. So I'd say it like this. Last night, those are key words there, last night, while I was um, putting my sheets on my bed, I noticed they smelled like cigarette smoke. And it must have been the resident who helped me fold them. That's a perfect description. It, it's simple, just a couple sentences. And it's a snapshot of um, one single event and a specific time I felt that emotion. So to explain what I'm saying, let me give you like a bad example. Um, I've been frustrated recently because this resident has been trying to help with my laundry and he doesn't do it how I like it to be done. What was wrong with that? I'll give you a few seconds. I'm just going to dip in here and listen to me crushing these leaves and vines for a minute. You can comment below if you can identify what was wrong with that. Exactly. It was not a specific moment in time. And it may have been more than one conflict. You know, I'm, I was describing kind of some general frustration I was having with this resident um, while I'm thinking of it. In Titanmaker, you don't use names. So I wouldn't call this person by his name. I just say a resident here at the center. So you might say something like teacher, boss, um, husband, wife, brother, sister, cousin, um, classmate. That's fine. So you don't need specific names, but it needs to be a specific person. Um, and a specific instance. So say I was having general frustration with this guy. You know, say, you know, last time he helped me fold my clothes and he doesn't fold them like I like them folded. You know, he uses a different folding method. <laughs> um, but that's something else. Uh, that's another conflict, you know? So I'm, I'm identifying a specific conflict, and, it, and here's kind of a litmus test. It occurred, you, you can say, you can give it a time stamp. It occurred yesterday about 7 p.m., 
is when I felt anger. You know? So I'll give you the bad one again and the good one. The bad one is, I've been frustrated recently because... Uh, Wynn, I'll just call him Wynn, that's not his name. I've been frustrated recently because Wynn has been trying to help with my laundry and he doesn't do how I like it. Okay, first problem, I'm saying frustrated instead of anger. Second problem, I'm using his name. I just need to say a resident or roommate. Okay, that's better. Roommate. Um... Third problem, it was not one specific in instance. There's no way to put a timestamp on that. It was just kind of a general description of something I was uneasy about. No, I need to say, I felt angry yesterday about 7 p.m. when I was putting my sheets on my bed. Because a resident tried to help me with my laundry, but somehow they ended up smelling like cigarette smoke. You know, perfect. That's step one. And I'll tell you why we do it this way. One, you need to work with a particular emotion. You know, you need to identify it. Um, you don't need to downplay it. Like I was doing earlier, saying it's not a big deal. You know, just call it anger. It's anger. It's not being miffed or frustrated. I was angry. I was angry. <laughs> um... So that's part of it, is identifying the emotion. Another part is, it's like you're at the timestamp. Um, one, I think it forces you to think about a particular one conflict, you know, deal with one conflict at a time. That makes sense. And, um, you know, you don't want to be like, it's, it's also, you don't, you don't want to be like, you want to be specific, not only for yourself, but say you need to interact with this person around the conflict at some point. That's not necessarily part of the process. And a lot of people assume that, oh, this is conflict. This is a conflict resolution process. So I'm going to be forced at some point to confront my roommate or, you know, whatever it is. No, this is about you processing the emotion. Um, but if you, if you choose in the process to talk to your roommate or spouse or teacher or sibling, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to come at them with a general complaint. You know, that's not fair. Just be specific so you can say, you know, yesterday when this happened, um, you get the picture. Uh, the other thing is, I'm not a psychologist, but I play one on YouTube. <laughs> I think there's something to... Um, Going back to that particular, thinking about that particular time when you felt that anger, you know? Um, and really processing that one event and working with that one event, you know? Um, Our Titan Maker leader calls it slice theory. And I, don't, I think it's his own, you know, theory. 
Um, I shouldn't be laughing because I think it is sophisticated and true. Um, and he does have formal mental health training. Um, but I don't think it's like a, you know, widely discussed or, um, you know, like a, like if you Googled it, I don't think you're going to find that. At least what he's talking about, what we're talking about here. So anyway, dealing with that one conflict and, and that one moment in time where you can go back and really examine and feel that emotion. You know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm just kind of setting the scene for step two. Do you want to take a guess at what step two is? <laughs> I don't know if that's... Um, ooh, I like that. I just kind of like that. Gener it looks look like a cool wallpaper. Kind of like how each each session, each episode, we're kind of blessed with a kind of a, oops, a cool screenshot. You know, at least one cool one. And it's funny because <laughs> we're doing the absolute exact same thing every single episode. If you're just joining us, welcome. I'm Gautama Gamer. I don't know how to say Gautama, so if you'd like to help me there, record a YouTube. I have listened to YouTubes. You know, there's those where um, they just pronounce stuff. And first of all, I can't remember, but I think that's I think that's Buddha's um, first name. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did, just because of the mindfulness theme is why I chose it. I'm um, not into Buddha. Uh, obviously, I don't even know how to say his name. Um, totally respect Buddha's friends and Buddha. Well, maybe I'm disrespecting them by just kind of... <sighs> casually using his name like that. I don't know if that's certainly appropriation isn't it anyway um, maybe maybe it's genuine I what's happening here I'm I'm raising this jungle and talking about mindfulness <laughs> and other helpful things Or whatever I feel like talking about, like my headset. I hope you enjoy it, but if you're this far into it, you know, there's either, you know, something's wrong with you. <laughs> or you enjoy it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Just being honest. <laughs> I just want to be honest, and that's that's one of our core values here at Gautama Gamer. Mindful Minecraft is the series, because I might do other games at some point. I've only done Minecraft so far. Love it. But I'm raising this whole area. This is um, of Temples and Totems RTX. And it has really cool temples. And I've done a, like four seasons already improving, <laughs> in quotes, improving the other temples in this world, which are really cool. They're, the temples are cool. I'm not sure if my modifications, I think my modifications are cool. You can be the judge and go back and watch all four seasons. I feel like we've done a lot this episode. Uh, but now we're going to make our own temple. 
I want to do an Art Deco vibe. That's all I know. I don't know if, what what the theme, like the spiritual theme of the temple. The others are like Fire Temple, Water Temple, Earth Temple, and I think Air Temple. I was thinking about Light Temple. Temple of Light maybe sounds a little better, but all the others use that format. Earth. I'd really like to use Earth. Um, sky. That's kind of cool. Sky Temple. Oh, but there's already the Air Temple. And the sky is made of air. <laughs> um, oh, so we're raising this whole jungle here. I've kind of defined the area. I'm done for the day. Let's quit this. We're being really good. Let's just get a little bit, let's do a little bit more down here. To really give us that sense of accomplishment. But so I've um, traced, or taken a slice. Speaking of slice theory, I took a slice out of the jungle in the square area that I want to clear. And now I'm just literally... Um, and I honestly don't, I think it's going to be like 50 episodes of this. I don't know altogether. This is like, this is episode 12. Maybe not. If we're one third done and then, you know, it took several episodes to do the initial slice. This is much faster than just, you know, that slice around the edge. So if we're about a third done, 30 episodes, I think I will, I think, oops, I'll be really interested to know where we are at episode 24. I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be, we're going to get to there. But anyway, then we're going to, well, I can't promise. I, I want to look and see if the area, did is the area we cleared big enough? Um, because I actually, my outline was that, see that, I'm pointing at it with the crosshairs. It's just like, what is that? See, I think it's sea lantern. But I actually came in like something like 10 blocks. That's where I wanted originally, and I measured the other, or at least one other temple. Um, so I could, about that. Good grief, can I talk? That was about the space I needed to clear. But I came in from that point about, let me show you this, we're done now. About 10 more blocks is where I did the slice because I thought, you know, we would make this natural looking and with the trees kind of natural. But then I was like, this actually looks kind of cool where it's just like sliced and perfectly flat. Um, and, you know, that would be, that it would be much more easy for me as a human uh, so I gotta, I need to correct that a little slice went a bit too far. So I just did this slice. See, that's perfect. And then I went, but see, it's, that's through the outline. And it's a little bit, so I just, I want to get all this cleared out. And I think it'll be big enough. And I would hate to like have to slice further because it's the, the flat slice that really takes time. But it, you know, if you're like 30 episodes in and you're like, let's do five more episodes to get just the size we want it, then okay, that's that's what we'll do because I'm not going to like compromise if I'm, you know. Do not, if you, if you do something that takes this long, don't start compromising once you get 30 episodes in. 
Oh, but see, we left this tree here, which is so cool. Really nice touch. Love that. But the rest, all this, we're going to raise it. Just in case a few of you are new. Okay, join us for the next episode, and we're going to talk about feeling the emotion. Did any of you guess that? Step two, feeling the emotion. <laughs>